Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's episode of Tech Driven Vlog. Uh, my name is Matthew and the topic of today's video is going to be uh, financing cars. Do you buy or lease? Now this is the choice that uh, everyone faces and I know there's a lot of uh, information and advice and opinions out there already on uh, YouTube, but I feel like a lot of it is very extreme and doesn't really take into account everybody's own individual uh, circumstances and uh, really preferences on vehicle ownership. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes just kind of talking through uh, my thought process when um, I'm getting a new vehicle, uh, whether I look at leasing or buying it and kind of making the best decision for myself and uh, hopefully give you some insight too on uh, if you're going through something similar, uh, kind of what you should consider and uh, what makes sense uh, for your own circumstances. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, we're going to make a coffee run. So let's go get that first. Let's go. So I know you guys see it, that there's a lot of what I feel like is extreme uh, financial advice and opinions out there, especially on YouTube. Uh, you hear a lot of things like, uh, you know, you should only pay in cash or you should never uh, consider leasing. Um, but to me, that's pretty short-sighted because there are, you know, everybody has different individual circumstances and, uh, and individual you know, preferences. So, I mean, there are some cases where leasing makes the most sense. There are some cases where, you know, financing for 72 months, say, it makes, makes the most sense. So for me, the most important component when deciding whether to um, buy or lease a vehicle is the vehicle itself and um, what it looks like as far as depreciation. Now, the vehicles that it makes the most sense to buy new are the ones that hold their value exceptionally well. And if you look at something like a Raptor, and I'm hoping a T-Rex will also um, fall into that category as well, or a Jeep, uh, these cars don't depreciate very fast at all. And if you look at some cases, if you look at used ones, they might cost more than some of the new ones for, for some reason, just because you know they're really hard to get a hold of and they're really desirable. So if you're purchasing a vehicle like that, um, you know, buying it, outright or financing it, um, probably makes the most sense because um, even if you're financing it, you're probably going to be in a positive equity position uh, pretty quick, even if you don't put anything down. Uh, for me, with the, the TRX, I know uh, those where they're so scarce and people can't get a hold of them. Um, now, if you look at like Auto Trader or something, a lot of them are selling for selling the used ones with a thousand miles on them for you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars over uh, what they sold uh, for originally, um, which that's that's not going to last forever. But um, eventually, supply will catch up with demand and the prices will kind of come back down. Um, but still, it. If, if it's going to be you know something like the Raptor or like a Jeep or really any kind of off-road vehicle, they tend to hold their value uh, really well. So I figured it's going to be the same case with the uh, TRX. Now for something more like my BMW X5 that I'm in uh, right now, something that depreciates really quickly, uh, usually a lease makes more sense, uh, but you have to have be in the category where you're going to drive the right amount of miles to where you're going to be um, under that after the two or three year period that you're uh, leasing the vehicle for. Uh, so me, for example, I work from home. I don't really drive that many miles. I may drive anywhere between like five and 10,000 miles uh, a year on a vehicle. So um, for me, leasing makes a lot of sense, uh, especially um, you also have to consider the amount of time you're gonna be in a vehicle. So for something like this, the X5, uh, I generally wouldn't want to own it after the three-year period because um, once you get to a point where you're getting to where it's out of warranty, uh, I don't want to be responsible for uh, repairs on this thing. Uh, not because I'm worried about mechanical issues or anything like that. I would be more worried about like electronic issues because uh, that's where you get into stuff where it's really hard to figure out what's going on and it's really difficult to fix. So uh, repairs on that when things start going on electronically, uh, are going to be very high and uh, f with all the the new electronics that are on new vehicles uh, it just makes way more more sense to lease and then turn it big back in after three years um, and get a new one if you want to get something you know similar so for me purchasing generally makes more sense because 
Uh, I tend to trade out of vehicles every uh, either year and a half or a couple of years. Uh, I don't keep anything too long, so uh, purchasing makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to, to trade out of uh, in that situation. The other thing to remember about leasing, though, is uh, the leases are meant to go to their full term. It's possible to trade out of it early, um, but that generally can be pretty difficult. Uh, if you get in the right situation, you might be uh, have positive equity, equity before the end of the lease, but generally that doesn't happen. So uh, definitely before you lease, plan on you know at least being in the car for the full 24 or 36 months. Uh, another reason why purchasing makes a lot more sense right now is the low interest rates you can get. Um, from what I've seen, you can generally get you know between three and four percent on pretty much every uh, new vehicle. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, either at inflation or barely below inflation. Um, and right now, the way I see kind of prices rising and everything, I would imagine it might even be below inflation. So, um, you know, taking out a, a long-term loan, like for 72 months and um, getting that low interest rate, uh, a purchase uh, isn't a bad move right now. Um, I would generally only go out to 72 months because I've seen the, if you do... 84 months, they usually offer that, but it's usually a much higher interest rate. Um, I've seen it's it's probably more like 5 or 6% at their best, and um, generally much worse than that. So manufacturers sometimes will also offer 0%, um, and it's usually you know a 72-month term. Um, one thing to be careful of, uh, zero, 0 is a good rate, of course, um, but usually your um, not taking advantage of a rebate. It's either you're choosing between a rebate, which can, be, depending on the vehicle, be several thousand dollars. Um, you're passing on the rebate to take the 0% interest instead. Um, so you're starting with, you know, you're paying that basically just interest up front to not pay interest over however many years the term of your, your loan is. So that's really a list of what are the things I consider with making a lease or purchase decision. It also kind of depends on, you know, what deals a manufacturer is offering at the time. Um, you can always get those through their website before you go to the dealership. So don't, uh, definitely don't rely on the dealership to get those. Uh, definitely go through the manufacturer's website to get the um, best deals and kind of be aware of those before you start uh, talking to a dealership about a specific car. There is no financial guru on the internet who's going to know uh, your exact situation and what makes the most sense to do uh, in your particular situation. All right, so that's going to wrap things up for today's video. appreciate you guys, as always, uh, watching. If you uh, enjoyed today's video, give it a like and subscribe below, uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.